Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, interesting video today. Yet again, we're going to watch former missionary helped over 600 Christian priests convert to Islam by the channel Muslim Convert Stories. I was already shocked by the video of the Christian Orthodox priest converting to Islam, but apparently today we're going to find out about 600 priests that converted to Islam. With no further ado, let's have a look. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, alaikum In salam. this episode, we're bringing a miraculous story of a Christian priest named Musa Bangura, who left this wealthy life of the church and became a dedicated Muslim. What is really dedicated. interesting is that he is not an ordinary Christian. Both his father and brother are pastors in the church and his entire family have been dedicated themselves to the service of the church. Zemusa Bangura, formerly called Mark Moses Bangura, is from Sierra Leone and had his family root deeply embedded in Christianity. Due to Moses' bright and intelligent personality from young age, he was sent to a church school and a school for training priests, and okay. he came out in flying colors. However, instead of assigning him to a church immediately after he graduated, the church official sent him to Nigeria to attend an evangelist church. He became an experienced evangelist priest that had the ability to persuade people. Even the church officials were amazed by how well Moses can conceive people about Christianity and how he can compel anyone to change their religion. That was an amazing talent because not everybody can do that. So Moses sure. succeeded and he returned to Sierra Leone. He has become a fully trained priest, so he's ready to take up the missionary activities. He began to organize activities all over the country. He started from the Muslim community inviting them to Christianity. So what exactly drove him to become a Muslim when he has been preaching against Islam all his life? This is it. Yep. On a fateful night, he slept like a normal person would and had a dream. Here's the climax. Wait for it. I'm here. Young man, why are you taking people away from the light and calling them into darkness? Why do you persist in the dark? Why don't you come into the light? This is a warning. In his dream, he heard a man in a flowing garment say those to him. He was baffled and didn't tell anyone when he woke up the next day. After that, I had a dream. A young man telling me, Brother, this is a message that you are taking people from the light to the darkness. Stop doing this. Then now, come into the light. Then you can go to the darkness and taking the people from the darkness, bringing them to the light. Stop mislead mislead the people. This is a warning for you. He thought it was Satan playing tricks with him and wanted to Might take be. his Bible to read. Then he realized it was like the young man was still around him. Moses spoke to a priest in the church about the dream since he kept wondering what it could be. The priest told him it was a demon trying to sabotage his mind because he's a high priest. It but could guys, be. Let's understand that when the Almighty is calling you into the light, he won't leave you to go astray. Moses wasn't pleased with the answer he got from the priest since he already thought about that himself, but he knew the situation was about something else. The thought of the dream didn't leave him for a second, and he felt like it was tormenting him. Moses then visited the Imam at a mosque and explained the situation. The Imam said, So he already had contact with Muslims and with Islam. It wasn't foreign to him. My brother, you're a very lucky person. Look, Allah invites you to your religion without any intermediary. What are you waiting for? Moses was satisfied with what he heard and said he'll like to revert at that moment. Okay. The Imam, however, said he can't take that decision and took him to the director. The director saw him and since Moses was quite popular, the director was surprised 
that the high priest wanted to revert. Moses explained to him too, and he was told to come back on a Friday. As he was going, he thought about the Christian church very quick and decision. how they financed his life. He thought about the properties that were bestowed to him by Christians and were like, he will revert. He was like, why will I leave Christianity that had everything and come to Islam that has nothing? And this was one of his struggles on the path of becoming a Muslim. We all this actually reminds me of the Bible and the parable of the rich man. We read in Mark 10, 17 to 31. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. This amazed them. But Jesus said again, Dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. To me, this parable is absolutely beautiful because it shows us that we cannot worship anything besides God. Of course, we cannot make our riches into idols. And this is really what is happening here. To many people, the riches of this world are more important than God. And this is why they won't enter the kingdom of heaven. Because they're holding on to their material possessions, they cannot let go and focus on God alone. Moreover, if we really look into this parable, we of course see yet again Jesus pointing to God, away from him, away from the riches, away from creation, onto the creator. We should know that the Almighty loves us, and when he makes decisions, it's for our own good. Sure. Moses had the dream again, and he knew he had no choice but to revert. He went back on a Friday, took the Shahada, had a bath, and became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. During the time for Juma. And the Muslim congregation saw him. They were afraid at first, thinking he bought another crusade to the masjid. Imagine their surprise when they got to know that he was there to revert. Hence, this is the beginning of Moses' journey towards being a Muslim. He changed his name to Musa Bangua to ascertain his faith. It's one thing to have accepted the call of entering into the fold of Islam, and it's another to live with it. Musa was worried about how Christian missionary and his family will take the matter, but he believed Allah Almighty will get him through. Normally, the Christians usually have meetings every Friday. After taking the Shahada on that blessed Friday, Musa went to the church meeting. When the pastors and priests saw him, they were surprised. They asked about the reason he cut his hair and is wearing a garment that's worn by the Muslims. <laughs> Musa replied by saying, is now a Muslim. <laughs> and he went back to the church. The pastors huh? were speechless <laughs> and thought Musa was going mad when he explained his dreams and decisions. Sure. They later commanded one of them, a pastor, to stay with Musa and see if he's truly a Muslim and isn't going mad. The pastor followed him home while counseling and telling him to go back to Christianity. The pastor told Christian missionaries what happened and the church made a decision. They took all of Musa's properties without wow. allowing him to pack a single thing. He was left with nothing and had to hide with a Muslim friend. He wasn't allowed any contact with his relatives, although he got to see his sister who told him not to go home. Musa was able to contact his wife and explained his predicament. Moreover, his wife's family are Christians, so all his pleading fell on deaf ears. Hard for they them. got divorced and he was left oh. with no one. Likewise, he can't stay in hiding forever 
which was the reason the Muslim community wrote a letter to the church council telling him they'd be held responsible if something bad happened to Musa. Furthermore, the period of hiding helped Musa improve rapidly in his Islamic education and he proceeded to start calling people towards Islam. He began his da'wah activities back as a Muslim and helped many people become Muslims. Brother Musa Bangura now travels from village to village, from town to town, spreading the message of Islam. Everywhere he goes, he challenges the missionary priests and the Christian clergy that he can prove Islam is the truth. If I win, you will be Muslim. If you win, I will become a Christian. These debates That's like have helped Didat. over 650 priests and many of their congregations towards Islam. Yes, well, uh, now it's more than 600 pastors. Now it's more than. And Alhamdulillah, even some of my pastors, that the other pastors converts, I sent some to Liberia to work now because Liberia is a Christian-dominated country. And I sent some to the different cities in Sierra Leone, those who are former pastors. I trained them just like what I'm doing. Now we are all over. I can boast of having more than 1,000 pastors now into Islam, which are doing the same work. Though we are struggling, we are suffering, but we are doing this because we are running the hereafter, not this world. His fame wow, spread man. quickly, so much so that they no longer dare to confront him. Alhamdulillah. May Allah increase his reward and elevate his rank in both worlds. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. As I said already, after the Orthodox priest converting to Islam, nothing shocks me any longer. But I do have some questions. Where is the Holy Spirit here? If we believe the doctrine of Christianity and we say all of those priests surely must have been filled with the Holy Spirit. They must have been guided by Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Trinity itself. How come that they then can convert to Islam if they really saw the truth of Christianity, it would be an impossibility. Once you saw the truth, how will you revert into something that is false? So that by default must mean that they weren't upon the truth because the truth is unshakable. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. As always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.